Hi friends, myself Darshan Savla here on behalf of Dress My Craft and today I will be showing you all how to create this beautiful poinsettia flower and we will be making a brooch from this and this flowers have been made from one of the best floral paper collection that is the soft oriental floral collection which is 120 GSM from Dress My Craft. This is an amazing paper. It is highly water absorbent, color absorbent, it is highly pliable and the best part about this is once when you soften it, once when you put it in, dip the petals in water and you stiffen it, try to heat it, it becomes hard rock. So let's get started making this beautiful brooch. First of all, we need the poinsettia die dies and we also require the filler flower dies. So here is the poinsettia flower die from Dress My Craft. This is available in six sizes. I have used the uh, third size that is one, two, third size and the fourth size. So we have made one big flower and one small flower from this. Here are the leaves and this is the five petal filler flower from the filler flower die collection from Dress My Craft. So first of all, we die cut out this from the soft, or soft floral oriental paper and we get started firstly with the coloring of this. To color the red poinsettias, I have used the red geranium archival ink. I have used the cobalt blue to deepen the red tones. So first of all, we take the finger daubers. We take the red geranium color and start applying the color on the front and the back of the petal. We don't want the back side of our flower to show white. So we will color the front and the back both. To get started with we will give a base coat of this red geranium archival ink. As you all know archival inks are permanent inks and once when we dip the petals in water the color will not bleed off. So I flip over on the back and I take the red color and I color the petals. So we can color this in different different shades as well. So today I have chosen red and it's a very beautiful, very beautiful die cut out. It's so perfectly made the shapes of the die that the flower really stands out well. So to deepen the center of the red color, I have used blue. The blue along with the red gets into a little darker brown tone. So from the center up to one fourth from the base, brush going upwards, apply this cobalt blue color and you can see you get a little bit of shading. I hope you can see it clearly. Oh yes. Again I flip back and I shade the back of the petal also so we get two tones of red in case you find a little patch you know you just go over the red once again so you will see the color blended well so after this we will first finish coloring the leaves as well so we will complete with the coloring part for the leaves I have used fern green Again to deepen the greens we use the blue that is the cobalt blue which will further deepen the greens. So you take the fern green archival ink at first, shade up the leaf on the front and on the back both. We want the leaf color to show same on both the sides. We wouldn't like to show a white color on the back. So we add the fern green color on the front as well as the back of the petal. Thereafter to deepen this we take cobalt from the base moving upwards give strokes of blue like this. So this is how you get a very beautiful shaded leaf. We will also complete shading the filler flower with the archival ink color buttercup. So you take this buttercup, we take yellow, contrast to red is yellow and it's really very beautiful. 
only from the center up to three fourth, leaving the tips of the petal white. It looks nice and shaded, and it really looks very natural. So now a filler, a leaf, and a petal, all three are colored and are ready to emboss. We will move on to now the embossing of the petals. Moving on to the next step for embossing. Make sure that you clean your uh, craft sheet immediately with the help of baby wipes as there is a proportion of alcohol a little present in it and it really helps you to clean your craft sheet. This is a thick craft sheet from Dress My Craft. It is a wonderful craft sheet and you can see this leaves no stains and it cleans within seconds. Now we need a water bowl. We need an embossing pad to emboss the petals and we also need a small tissue paper to make sure that we have to keep the petals for drying. So now the first step before we put the petals in water we will be taking our tools ready. So this is a tool groove golf tool set and this comes in a nice zip kind of a pouch packaging like this and there are four sizes available. Depending upon the size of your work, we will select the size of the tool. You have the small, this is the small, you have the medium, you have the large and this is the bigger one. So in total, we have four groove gold tools. These are have superior stainless steel quality and very nicely deeply grooved tools. So we will be using today the medium size and that's a perfect small size and that is absolutely perfect for our work and we will also be requiring the tweezer this is a nice fine tip long straight tweezer so first of all you take the petal dip it in water for about three to five seconds and remove the petal from the water bowl and place it on a dry tissue same thing you do also for the filler and same thing you also do for the leaf. Now once these petals are ready, they are out from water, they are ready to emboss. So to help them dry, either you fold the tissue or you just dab another tissue on top so that the front and the back both dries up well. We place this poinsettia petal on the soft embossing pad using the back end tip of the groove golf tool that is the tip and we will be using the side not that sharp tip to give veins to give lines these lines are nothing else but the characteristic of the poinsettia flower the characteristic is they have you know these kind of vein lines the flower shapes so we will be embossing i'll just zoom so you can see it better so first step i'll be pulling a line in the center of the petal using the side I will not use the point or else it might tear the paper thereafter I will be giving diagonal lines forming either you say an A shape A alphabet or a V alphabet on both the sides so first I finish giving these lines and leaving a distance of 2 to 3 mm in between the two lines giving a very mild pressure this is a soft oriental paper. It really doesn't need pressure. You know, you would just feel as if, you know, it's very, very, very light paper and very easy to emboss. It does not, it's absolutely a pain free paper. So you have these vein kind of lines on both the sides. Once again, to define the center line, you pull a line in the center. I am using the sides. I'm not using the point. If I use the point, I may end up tearing the petal. So be gentle first in the center then you go on pulling lines on both the sides of the central line of the petal giving a very mild pressure and you get very beautiful texture can you see i'll show you on a paper sorry can you see you can see very beautiful veins on the petals. This is how they look once you complete embossing all the five petals. Hereafter, we will start embossing the leaves. The leaves are also embossed in the same manner. First of all, we need to give a line in the center 
now this is the front and this is the back so we start giving diagonal lines exactly same like the poinsettia flower so one is on the left and one is on the right like this and once again pull a line in the center so you get a beautiful shape of a leaf and you can see the depth of the wings from the back as well so this is how you complete embossing the flower petals and the leaves for the tiny fillers we will be using the groove tool on the front side the groove lines give a texture of lines embossed lines in the center of the filler flower so from the top of the petal i wouldn't go outside the paper i wouldn't start inside the paper i will start exactly where the paper begins give a pressure and come towards the center you will automatically see the flower paper or the petals curling inside which means the paper is getting embossed to give you a closer view can you see if i tilt it you can see the veins on the paper that are giving with the help of the groove tool these are excellent groove tools which are quite deeper and they give you wonderful lines what i will be doing is i flip over the petal and i take the embossing tool take the martha stewart or any small embossing tool available and you flip over the petal and press it down on the sponge so this is how you get very beautiful filler flowers and they really look gorgeous and they add an extra spark to your arrangement here after we will start forming the flowers so we head on to forming the flowers the most important step is to dry the petals once you finish embossing the petals it is very important to heat set it when you heat set it when you heat set it the petals become hard rock so keep rotating your hair dryer around do not hold the hair dryer in one place this is a heat tool excuse me it is not a hair dryer i it's just a slip of tongue and you know i'll make you feel how it really becomes hard rock i can actually make a sound and show you how hard it becomes can you see can you hear the sound this really makes the paper hard rock and now we move on to the arrangement the petals we will be using ultimate glue from dress my craft and we require these green wire pollens in the center this comes they come in a bundle of 25 i i mean i guess and we require total 7 green head in the center so i have taken four wires i cut them in half and i keep it ready so now the first step is i take the ultimate glue before i use the glue i must shape the flower petals to shape the flower petals i just use the ball tool to give a nice cupping in the center thereafter you apply glue right in the center place the second petal and make sure that you place it alternate one in between the two now these flower petals or this particular dye you wouldn't see it uniform if it is uniform you can see a very nice shape by itself but because this is not uniform i am adding one more layer which will add fluffiness or which will add a little bit of more volume to the flower so i apply a very little ultimate glue once again and i will now place the third layer on the top here 
and leave this to dry for a second. Only once it dries a little bit, I will be pricking a hole inside to put in the wire pollens. In the meanwhile, I will show you how to make the filler. So this is the filler flower and you can use your perforating pad to give a prick. Perforating pad is a little thicker compared to the embossing pad and you can give a prick hole in the center there. So this is my perforating pad which is little thicker, kadak, which is stiffer and you can hear the prick sound and we will prick a hole for using the back end of the pointed tool and the uh, size of the, the hole depends how much you push in the tool. If you want the bigger holes, maybe for the seven wire pollens, then we will insert this uh, tool more deeper into the flower. But here I just want one pollen, so I'm giving a very small prick. Here I'll be using in the center these lime green wire pollens. I just need one in the center. Once again, you get it into a bundle like this. And what we will be doing is, you take a toothpick, you apply very little glue here at the tip. Very little means very little. And you prick this inside and pull it. So this is how you get your filler flowers ready. We will require two pieces of these filler flowers and I'll show you how to bunch them. For bunching, we require this green floral tape. This green floral tape is very tacky, it is sticky and it has a stretchable stretchable properties. So first of all I am folding the tape and I am cutting it into half so that it doesn't accumulate too much of a thickness on the wire and the wires look naturally very nice, th thin and sleek. So once you cut the green floral tape in the center, I will pull a little and show you, it has a stretch and at the same time it has a glue property so place one filler up one filler down a little bit you know one up one down and absolutely from the neck of the second filler neck means exactly from where the paper ends pull the tape diagonally going down and stretch it and pull it so this is how we will be using two bunches of four fillers in the arrangement Now our flower has dried up and once again I take my perforating pad which is a little stiffer and using the back end of the bigger tool I will prick a hole right in the center and as I said I need a little wider hole I will pierce the tool inside a little bit more making sure that the hole becomes a little wider and a little bigger so that it becomes very easy for all the seven wire pollens to go inside. Can you see the hole is a little wider compared comparatively and what I'll be doing is I'll be taking in total seven heads. So this is three, four, five, six and seven. So these are seven heads which I'll line them together here itself and I'll be putting glue a little bit here only in between these wire pollens so that it becomes very easy to stick. Now I will be piercing in all the seven wires through that bigger hole and I will be pulling it down making sure that I get a very beautiful seven head flower shape in the center. Now we will be cutting the wires from the bottom only once this entire thing has dried or else the wire pollens might slip out. To make sure that it dries, you also apply a little glue on the back here so that the wires once you cut do not fall apart. After this we are ready for the arrangement on the brooch. Time the flower is drying, I will show you how to uh, get ready the brooch pin. This is the pin which you get it locally and what you are going to do is you are going to stick this one and a half inch circle cut out from the dots and stripes pattern paper pack from dress my craft so I will be taking a one and a half inch circle punch and I will punch cut out the circle and you see a very crisp cutting 
Thereafter, I also take a gold mirror cardstock circle cutout, which I'll be placing it right on the back for more, for more, more better grip, or else it might slip out. And I will be sticking this with the help of UHU glue. This UHU glue is available with Crafters Corner, and this sticks very well to the metal. So what we would do is we would take this glue a little bit here on the pin base and I'm extremely sorry about the noise in the background. It's evening time and there is a little bit of a traffic on the road. My work area is facing the road. So this is the UHU glue. I haven't given any pressure but it is a very liquid glue. So you really need to be uh, very... Uh, careful about it it's a highly tacky otherwise it keeps oozing out and out from the tube you can and then leave this to dry thoroughly once this is dry and once this is ready we are ready to do our arrangement on the green side in case you think you really have to hold it you can just take small paper clips and clip it in the meanwhile this dries and gets ready once we are ready with the brooch pin, it is dried and it is ready. We have made the nice pretty bow with the satin cords. These are two satin cords. One is ivory and one off white and one is the olive green, which has been used to make this nice cute little loop kind of a thing. And now my flower is ready and dry. So I'll cut off the wires from the back. So once you cut off the wires, you will see the flower so beautiful. So we are ready with our flower, big flower, one small flower, two bunches and three leaves, a brooch pin and one nice little satin bow. So first step, what I'll be doing is I take this satin cord and I place it on the left side here. Hereafter, first thing I'll be doing is I'll be placing a big flower on the top. So I immediately put a glue on the back and I place this here. Once this is stuck, I take the small flower and I place one flower underneath here. Beautiful. So already the arrangement starts looking so beautiful. Now we need to place three leaves and these two fillers. So first of all, let me start placing the leaves. The leaves are a little bigger in size. So what I will be doing is I'll be cutting them a little from the bottom at an angle so that I get the point to insert inside the arrangement. So anytime you find your leaves a little bigger, you can do this. So you take this leaf and you place one leaf here you need not use all three you may just use two you may just use one as for your personal liking we have given you a little extra I think two are enough still I will try to pierce in the third one from the back here so it looks nice this is the glue gun and should be nice hot and ready oh yeah this is looking very pretty now these are wires you can bend these wires to an angle and you know shape it so that the fillers look natural cut the wire to the length that you require and start putting in the filler you can either use two fillers or you can use all four once again it depends upon you this is looking pretty maybe i can have one here on the top here the glue is wet inside but still Okay, pretty so far and we will be inserting a few red wire pollens here and there as just you know kind of a spark or you can see a nice addition to the fillers these pol wire pollens also play a very important role and one more technique I can just show you I haven't also added in the project but you know you can spiral these uh, wire pollens I did pull it uh, too hard but this is a nice way of you know adding some spiral 
wire pollens so they really help you I mean to look so cute and different in the arrangement so you can take three or four depends I mean it all depends upon you how much you want to add in so these look so pretty and so natural take very little glue gun glue from this really oozes out you can even put it in between the petals maybe one can be down here also I'll put it up behind the leaf yeah so now this completes the arrangement I'm just trying to give you a close-up so you can see how beautiful this cute little brooch looks and you see how it looks from the back you see how it looks from the front so this is how you complete your arrangement I'll just give a more better close-up so that you can see it and I'll hold it a bit steady so this is how you complete your brooch and here we are ready with two beautiful brooches thanks for watching i hope you all have enjoyed this flower making as much as i have enjoyed teaching you all and we'll be adding the list of supplies after the video you can watch them thank you so much